we're moving on to relocating the light switches. So I'm going to go ahead and move the, well, both aux cabin lights. And I have a, a new dual gang switch, right? So I've got two switches on here. This is a double on off switch. And we're going to install this on this wall right here. For us, I think it will really make a, a, an improvement. And my intention is to cap over these two switches. Well, this is kind of sort of a mess back here. All right, well, that turned the light off. So we know that these two wires, when touched together, should turn on the lights. And they do. We've disconnected the light switch, which is good. We're going to go ahead and get the hole cut and get everything started. So we need to get this marked out. And there. So we're going to use my fine tool to cut that hole. So we've got our hole. Make sure our light switch fits, which it does. And we need to get our connectors routed into here so we can put them on to the back of the switch. So that's the way it's going to go. So we're going to get that put right back there and screwed in place. And then throw the cover plate on. Just like that. All right, in this bathroom, there is no light switch on the wall. We have a 10 year old daughter who's not tall enough to reach the ceiling to turn the light on, which is massively even convenient even for us. So. I'm going to wire this switch from here down and put a light switch in the wall right here. After screwing around this for a few minutes and almost breaking it, I discovered that the light covers actually pop out um, under a lot of force. And there's a couple of screws holding it together. There we go. And we've got some low voltage wires. I'm not really sure how I'm gonna make it over there. I've got some stuff in the ceiling I was concerned with, like metal I-beams, so fishing that through there is gonna be a trick. All right, now we just need to get a wire through the wall, <laughs> across the ceiling over to here. I don't think there's a hole. I think this panel goes all the way straight through into here. I don't see any reason they would have put a hole in this ceiling, which means I'm going to have to very carefully remove this piece of trim and try and drill a hole in there. So it was nailed without hopefully screwing up the wall too bad. Well, that's what I wanted to avoid was screwing up the ceiling. All right, well, we chunkered up the wall a little tiny bit up here. The hole in there, so we're good. So we're gonna take uh, some wire, uh, two strands, and we're gonna run it down the wall and get it down here to this hole, hopefully. Sticking out the bottom here. Okay, and there we go. I just need to get the trim back over the top of this. That just turned off our light, which is a good sign. And now our switch should turn on and off the light, which it does. Now, I have a light switch that turns on and off the lights in the bathroom.
my daughter, when in the middle of the night, being 10 years old, who can't reach the ceiling, who can't reach this light, can come into the bathroom without waking us up and use this light switch to turn on and off that light. Under the bottom half of this bed, there is a large storage area. And it is not very conducive to use because it doesn't stay open when you open it. It falls back shut. So you have to lift it up with one arm and it's kind of heavy and awkward because you're lifting up the whole mattress and then put stuff in there and then it flops back down. I'm hoping that I can replace the gas struts with stronger ones and that will alleviate the problem. These are 35 pound gas struts. I'm gonna go ahead and pull these off of here and take one down to the store and see if we can get one that's the same length and stronger. So I went and picked up the new gas struts. Well, actually I had them shipped to me through Amazon. The original ones on here are 35 pounds each for a total of 70 pounds. So we're gonna jump them up to, uh, I believe it's 95 pounds each for a whole total of a lot. And hopefully they're gonna work. So we have those two sitting right here. Okay, so there's the original mattress. And the issue in my case has been this pad. As Let's flop down. Now hopefully when I lift this up, absolutely beautiful. So now it stays up. So we jumped from 35s to 90, I believe these are 95s. They're not labeled, they're an off name brand through Amazon. And I hope this works out much better in the long run. It'll give us a larger area to get dressed in by lifting up the bed and providing this extra space. It'll also provide us easier access to this storage area. So that's fixed, on to the next item. Uh, currently we have a plug above the bed up there that has two USB plug-ins on it. And when we first got the camper, we plugged in USB connectors and it charged our phone, no problem. And then uh, second or third trip, that thing just stopped working. So I'm gonna troubleshoot it and figure out what the heck's going on. All right, so we plugged her in. My phone should have lit up when it goes into charge mode and it didn't. We'll take a look. No charging symbol. So we should be getting 12 volts, which we are. We're actually getting 13.9. Now I gotta figure out where the heck those wires go. So then I decided to pull this thing apart out of the housing, which is this hole. And then I started troubleshooting this little guy. And it turns out this thing is toast. Uh, there's no fuse in here, there's no nothing. I don't know why this thing burnt out as quickly as it did. It, it lasted like two trips. So I ordered a new one of these on Amazon to be here in a couple days and we'll get that and we'll throw it back in that hole. All right, we've got our new part. So I don't need this stupid cap on there. This is indoors, but we do need this to go in here. There's a couple little flat spots in this thing that this thing's supposed to slide into and it ain't going. So we're going to widen this out a little bit. And there she goes, right on in. Okay. We'll thread on collar on the back. All right, got that snugged up. That one snugged up. Looks like we're ready to reinstall. Now we've got our little jumper between our hots and we're gonna test this baby out and hopefully it works because if it doesn't, that's gonna suck. And nothing. Could be that I have these leads switched, so we'll try that first. There it goes. So that is now charging. So I had the leads backwards. We got those straightened out, so we're all good to go. Everything's back working again. And plug in. There we go. One of the upgrades we're gonna make is this uh, adjustable easy hose carrier. My bumper is designed to have our sewer hoses in it. It worked okay uh, for the first four or five times, but like the fifth, fifth or maybe it was the sixth time we were using it, I was going down the freeway and the cap came off and the hose was dangling out, dangling on the freeway and some guys driving up to my window yelling at me, oh no, you know, so I have to pull over on the side of the road and take the hoses out, which you know how that is, not very fun, and then stick them in the camper on the side of the freeway. 
and by the time we got to the campsite, the other cap on the other end had come off also. So because of that, I'm going to not use this anymore and we're gonna install this hose keeper. So this big waste tube is sizable. And I wanna get as much length out of it as I possibly can. So I have fabric cobbled a bracket together that will support the sewer tube pipe. As professional as this bracket looks, it is just a bunch of scrap steel. So we gotta get the bracket under the camper. Now we can go ahead and throw our tubes in there and they shouldn't fall out going down the road anymore. At least that's the hope. There we go. Nice and secured, closer to the dump valves. That will keep us from losing a hose going down the freeway again. Well, one of the next things we're gonna take a turn on is a 110 plug-in for this double bunk setup. My wife has a heater blanket for my daughter and a lot of times we plug in a portable heater uh, plugging on the island. The problem is the cord's always in the way. It's dangling where it never needs to be. So I'm gonna try to put a plug in somewhere in this wall right here. All the wiring for my entire camper is run through this access cover. So I actually have, oh, this is amazing. I've got a 14 to, I got all the wiring I need. You can see the edge of this hole right here. That goes around the back side of this thing and the holes are already cut. So all I have to do is Install the plug and route the wire back over here and splice in right here. So we've got a dual outlet. This is a camper style outlet. I got this on Amazon. And we're going to get this put behind this panel right here in the wall. So we're going to grab our wire here to right here. The back of these plugs have a little label. It says white, G for ground, and black. The ground into the back right here. And you just push them down in there. It says you're just supposed to use the back of the push plate, this thing, to make that happen. We'll give that a whirl and see what happens here. And then this cover pushes those down even more when you go to snap it in place. Now granted, it appears to me that I have it upside down. There we go. All right, so that is all put together. There we go. So now that that is installed, we need to get in here and figure out which wire we need to get. You can see I've got coax cables and controllers and all sorts of stuff, basically, I need to get this wire right here. I need to find it in that mess of wire down there. So we can cut into our line and splice in right here. Just for a little extra precaution. Test to make sure we're working. Plugged in. Our new plug-in is all done. All right, now we get to check a few more things off the list. The list has been helpful in keeping track of the filming and also the repairs on the camper. 
But I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one up here. So I really appreciate you guys watching. Definitely check out some of the other links. I'll have my garage series and my house series. Hit that subscribe button. It always helps me out in the long run. Until next time, thanks for watching.